Council items, good review, all the works, great. Yeah, today the, the first one on our agenda is Public Improvement 373, that's our street project. Uh, I include 1st Street Northwest, 3rd Street Northeast, and 5th Street Northwest. Um, we received four bids on the project today. They range from $795,272 up to $1,075,644. It did include a, um, a bid tab on your uh, table in front of you as well. The bolt bid came from Larson Excavating out of Bowling Court, uh, which was considerably more than our uh, engineer's estimate by about $125,000. So tonight we are looking at uh, awarding that project to Larson uh, so that they can get started as soon as possible. Any questions on that, Barry? <coughs> Has Larson done work for us before? They have done some small work for us before in the past. Uh, I think it was Florence Avenue that they've, they've done some work. They've done work in Holding Ford. Um, I think the most recent one was also Swan Road. They've had some bad times as well. But for the most part, they've been fairly decent uh, in terms of making sure most of the drives that they work on. Because of the Swanville stuff, any concerns? Um, no, I think the problem with the Swanville one obviously was the, the time. Um, and we'll make it explicitly clear that's going to be one of the things that we're concerned about. The one benefit that we have, um, and Swanville had this, this uh, benefit as well, is that we'll have a performance bond. So if for whatever reason they fail to um, meet their, their their contract requirements, we can always hire it out to somebody else to have it done at that point and take it out of the phone. So we're covered on, on that respect. Did so you, go ahead. So I see there's about 3,000 difference between them and our local contractor that we've used. We've had some substantially good luck with, I guess. I don't recall much for issues at all with them. Do we have to take the low bid or can we? You have to take the lowest responsive bidder. Responsible, um, correct? Responsible bidder, yes. Um, Larson had Tri City as a sub. Tri City had Larson as a sub. So you're still looking at the same two players uh, in the mix as well. Did you uh, check Holding Ford what they thought of Larson's? Yep, I spoke with uh, some of the folks that have that I worked with in the past that have worked with, with Larson, um, and they said straight out that their strength is underground work, which is what they're proposing to do here. So they didn't have any concerns in terms of uh, Larson being able to move forward. So I'll give my recommendation tonight to award the bid to Larson next week. So on the bottom there, mm -hmm. you got corrected total. What's that on the two? They had a math error in one of their, their items. I don't remember exactly which one it was. Um, the unit price always governs when you have a, a unit price bid. Right. And so for whatever reason, as they were computing their, their total, um, there was a small error. It, it changed it by like $5, I think, on their bid form. They had uh, $785,278. But nonetheless, we wanted to get the corrected total in there based on what the unit price um, was. Any questions or concerns? I don't know. Does anybody that's been around longer know how frequently do they do change orders and you know, oops, we need more fill and as opposed to Tri City? I mean, we're talking the, the difference on these two are so minuscule. True. Um, one thing you'll have to keep in mind if you decide not to go with the lowest responsible bidders, you're going to have a hard fight. Um, and I wouldn't see necessarily any reason not to award it to Larson. Um, so I, I, even though I understand where you're coming from, I don't think you want to travel down that path too far. And that's what our, in terms of the chain orders and the quantities and stuff, that's what our RPRs are supposed to be watching, keep an eye on, make sure they're uh, installing it correctly and uh, quantities and such, make sure that they're not trying to gouge the city one way or another. <coughs> Greg, I, uh, you know, I understand where everybody's coming from because, of course, we'd like to keep everything possible as local as possible. Keep local people employed, but there's also laws governing what we have to 
And keep in mind, Tri-City is listed as Larson Sub, and Larson was listed as Tri-City Sub. So even if you decide to, for whatever reason, go with the number two bidder, <coughs> the work is probably still going to be the same regardless of one or two on who's going to do what. It's just a matter of who's going to be your general contractor and your point man on it. And if you check Larson, a lot of times local <coughs> people as Tri-City hires people from other areas. I mean, the, the difference on the gift is basically this network. True, true. So, I mean, if we don't know if either one of them has a propensity to up their fees once they get a job, I Tri-City is Tri -City starting to get more into the, to the concrete work, flat work as well as curb. Um, and I think Larson was using a, a subcontract contract for that portion of it. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was French Lake uh, concrete that they were proposing to use on Kimball. So that's one area that they're looking at using a different sub. Um, but I do know that Tri City has just recently started to download to that, that concrete work, so that's probably the difference. <coughs> Anybody else got any other questions? Concerns? Not man and well ceiling. Man and well ceiling. We received the grant, uh, which you'll see on your agenda on the regular uh, meeting tonight, from the Department of Health for ten thousand dollars to seal man and well. We opened the bids last Friday. Uh, we received three bids or three quotes from that. Uh, one from Northland Drilling, one from Trump Wells, and another from North Star Drilling. Uh, tonight we'll be looking at awarding the contract to Northland Drilling out of Randall. They got the lowest bid for the, the base bid portion of it. Um, and they're planning on starting, uh, I don't know if you notice the cones and such outside, but they are planning on starting tomorrow uh, to start sitting those, those wells. We're kind of in a, a time crunch with those particular items because the load restrictions come off on, on Thursday. So they've got a number of other things that were previously booked up, so we're looking at you know, Tuesday, Wednesday to complete that work, and then they're, they're free to do their, their other work that they have lined up originally. And that goes for all three uh, of the well drillers there. As soon as the load limits come out, they've got a number of things uh, already scheduled in for us. So tonight we'll be looking at awarding Northland drilling and the amount of $3,358 for just the base pit. So what's the deal with alternate A? Why are what's that? What's the deal with alternate A? Alternate A was if there's sufficient funds left over. Uh, we do have another well just outside of City Hall on the north side that we'd be looking at uh, drilling that out and sealing it. Um, looking at the prices, you know, one's at 7740, the other one's at 9665. That's not going to fit in turn into our ten thousand dollar grant. And so rather than spend a number of uh, or a bunch of city funds to get that one completed. We'd be looking to apply for the grant again in the fall uh, to complete that portion of it so that we can get grant funds for it as opposed to city funds. So we're looking at maximizing our grant funds for the dividend of the city money. So if we don't use the 10,000, we lose the rest of it? I think we're going to use all of it because that will also offset some of the costs that we're incurring in terms of staff time and equipment for uh, wells up here. We do have one right outside just to the east of City Hall that's going to be a little bit more difficult than we originally anticipated. Each one of these wells is in a vault and the one right out here uh, we're going to have to take some piping apart and uh, work on that to in order to allow us to drill down because it's directly above where the casing was at so we've got to do some pipe work and removals in there ahead of time which is going to take some time and with the with the grant we can get reimbursed for that portion. So I think we're going to use pretty much all of that $10,000. Okay. You got any other questions on that one? Greg, I just noticed, and uh, you know, going back to the last one and this one, that actually our local people typically would have an advantage in mobilization. Uh, because if you look at that first one, the difference in mobilization between uh, holding for and our group and holding for Larson and yeah. um, Tri City is nine grand. And so work is getting done that much cheaper by them for them to be under like 3000 right. And even with uh, Northland, zero mobilization, and then I look at the difference between Northland and 
uh, our North Star and Trout, and one's 30 miles away and one's 50 or whatever it right. is, and the one that's uh, 50 is cheaper. So it's All interesting right. to break these down. And, uh, North Star actually has a, an office here as well. Um, but Trout, you're right, is 30 miles away, so that's yeah. where the, the difference is there. Okay. You know, I think there's some, there's some uh, art to uh, bidding as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, you put little and mold and you put a pile of something else because they don't want you to see your competitors to see exactly what you're doing on everything. So it's a it's hard and almost impossible to vary. You, know, you got one set they want to do for I think it was curb yeah. and mold and mold. the other one was a buckle foot or something like that. So they they're varying things here and there. So it's it's hard and, and as much as you everybody wants to, to hire the local contractor, you've got the law. Most uh, responsible bidders is the law. Now, another thing to kind of point out, if you notice, you look, you look at the mobilization of uh, any one of these here, it's not just to get the equipment to the site, it's also to include uh, what I call soft costs. So, any bonding requirements or insurance requirements, that all goes into that portion of it as well. So, um, it doesn't take necessarily $40,000 to get this equipment here, it, it's everything else that's. Uh, Got any other questions? Anything else, Greg? Uh, I do have a couple of other updates that nobody else has. Uh, has anything else they want to add? I see you got this road maintenance agreement. Mm -hmm. I do, yeah. Right here too. Okay. What I added to that, um, now I have the last sentence on the, the end for what you have in the packet, which is page 24. Um, I did put that any future paving shall be at the township's expense. Um, I, I fully expect that you know if they decide to go back to gravel for that portion of it, that it's probably going to be in that, that condition for one or two years. Um, and even if you get you know vehicles traveling over it, it's going to start showing some some cross in the spring, and so they're going to have a hard time keeping that together. I suspect. Um, so I would I would anticipate they're probably going to want to go back to paving at some point in time. So I want to make sure that was included in our in our agreement so that because half of the road is technically ours that I didn't want to get uh, pulled into having to pay for when the original agreement had paving included in it. So if they decide to go back to paving, then it would be at their expense. So what kind of ramifications do we have if we don't agree to this? Tell them we want ours kept uh, asphalt. We already have an agreement, so there wouldn't be any negative ramifications. So if we tell them we want to let the asphalt, to either redo the asphalt or leave it the way it is. True. Fix the culvert or whatever. Because obviously, if it's a hazard, right. it's part of the agreement that they would fix it, correct? Right. right, yes. It just seems ridiculous that we let them dig up the road and switch it back to gravel and have nothing but problems. Agreement. They knew what it was two years ago when they came in with it. They knew what that road was. They've been maintaining half of it for all along. Anybody else got questions for him on this one? Greg, I've been doing some reading, and apparently this is a trend across the country where counties and townships are letting their stuff go back to gravel for maintenance costs. Do you see this taking hold? I don't, not, especially not in this situation. Um, you know, with it being swamped over that area and the, and the water table being so high, it's just an indication that the obviously the subgrade is, is soft. So whenever you drive and pick up over that, it's going to break up. Um, blacktop has twice as much strength as just regular gravel. And so if you put down two inches of blacktop, that's the equivalent of four inches of gravel. So any amount of blacktop is going to give you a better better road than, than just gravel. And they had expressed concern about semis driving north on that road. Yeah. Uh, so there would be greater problems with gravel than the pavement. Right. They yeah. have road restrictions on yeah. that road state. Yeah. Yeah. They do, but not if it's even a seven ton or nine ton road during the summer. 
that road was just paved here just two, three years ago, wasn't it? That was just I don't think it was that was just based on, on the condition of the pavement. Maybe five, seven years. I was going to say, say about six, seven years, it seems like. Right? It is a mess. Oh, there's no doubt. And, uh, you know, and I know that the township's responsibility as far as if they're going to pay it or whatever, so that's not really our concern but you know, that's just as though they, to dig that all, all that all the tar up and then haul in the dirt is that I mean are the cost pretty much similar that just dirt is gonna dump dirt and dump gravel on it grind it up mix it in with the tar and lay it back down. Right. Remember, the west half is the city portion, and we just got a maintenance agreement. The west half, south the west half is south. The south, but the, the east side of the road, east side of the road, is the cities, and the west side of the yes. road is the township. Yes. Within the south half, is that, is right. that right? With mm -hmm. north and south, this section, okay, we have split from down the center of the road. Yeah, the cities to just past where the ball field is. Right? Correct. Both sides. The end. Well, just south of the ball field. Both sides is within the city limits. So we maintain that entire stretch. Okay. The next, I'll say it's 4,000 feet, we have within the city limits the east side, the township has the west side. Okay. So we split that in half and said, okay, you guys can take care of the north, we'll take care of the south portion of that. So it totals for the city to maintain about 3,300 feet. And the township takes care of the next 2,000. Okay, so do we have both sides to the entrance to the ball field there? It's pretty close. I can't say for certain, but it's pretty close. Okay, to the I mean where I'm going is if we get to the ball field, then after that, who cares? Like, I mean, well, our maintenance goes 3,300 feet, so that's past the ball fields, yes. But within the city limits on east and west, um, I don't know where that, I know where it's at, but I don't know if it's by the ball fields or over the shelf. So. Right, I, I'm just... Yeah. Thinking once we get past the ball field, do we care? Do we, do we care? We leave the I mean, there's one house on the road past that. And it's the township. I think there's three. Okay, there's two. It's been a while since I've been on. Yeah, two, two, two on one. No property on the north end within the city limits. Is that school property? There's some school property. Yeah, that's not the school property. Not the city limits. Okay. They switched their question that gravel doesn't make any higher costs for us for maintenance on our part. Form shouldn't affect our development. Because we wouldn't, we wouldn't be maintaining that portion of it. So there's, and I explicitly asked that question if there was any cost for the city. They said no. Thing is, it's our road, so they chopped up. What are they going to do? Pretty chopped up already. Well, it's only half hours, right? <laughs> Only one so we get even, we chop your yeah. half on the side of the Well, that's why I wanted to add that last sentence. Any future paving shall be at the township's expense for their first portion of it. Um, if we decide to move forward with this and allow them to go to gravel, I have a feeling they're going to have a desire to want to make it go back to blacktop because of the maintenance issues. And I wanted it clear that we're not going to be participating on the cost at that point. Well, I think what the issue is for them, Guessing, but you know, you have how many township people affected by that road, and, and what good is it to the rest of the township that's going to have to pay uh, increased taxes on 150 grand or whatever it takes to do that road? Um, you know, everybody else is screaming, uh, they don't really care what happens to it. You can block it off for most of those people, right? And they look good. No, it's a it's a shortcut for the county garage and the trucks coming in to uh, wrench his truck with there. Exactly. Off the back, so. Okay. I do have a couple of other things that we'll be done with the uh, Okay. All right. Um, updates. Uh, Gamma Park did install the water over there, so that is ready for a uh, little better than water to start piping. We did purchase uh, four apple trees that have been planted over there. Uh, for that for that portion of it a lot of the number of other trees are all town. Um, North Star 
here. We worked there well over nine. We got that one up and running. If you remember back in January, that one went down. So that one's back up and running again. We were able to uh, kind of use this as an opportunity to switch out the motors and the impeller. Originally, we were doing about 700 gallons a minute. Now we're getting close to 900 gallons a minute. Um, that well was originally designed for, I think it was 1,000 gallons a minute. So we were able to increase the output uh, by doing some modifications to it. Right, it's probably known around town. We started a demo on the Sutsudetsi on the Jiffy building. Uh, we still have obviously the footings and stuff uh, to complete, but those projects are, are underway as far as pulling them out. Uh, we planted about 415 trees out at the park, um, as well as up at the snow dump. I think there were some on uh, Number Drive South and then a couple over at uh, the Gamma Park. So we've got a number of trees that we work with soil and water to get those in place. Uh, Pineco Park Wall, we're doing the restoration over there that's ongoing. Pavement markings throughout town are uh, ongoing as well. Those have been coming along nicely, freshening up the tank early in the spring and other than later on. Mendoc's doing some head wrap uh, replacement on the east side of, excuse me, the west side of town. So you'll, you'll notice that that actually started today, I believe. Um, May 6th is the day of carrying, and 16th we have the brush and leaf pickup uh, for the city. Greg, as far as repair to the north side of that building that was demoed, or do we take care of that? Right over here? Yeah. Um, we'll probably end up doing some, some painting and stuff on that one just so that it looks right. the same. That's my concern. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're not, we're not really finished over there. Yeah. Well, Greg, who put the shed on Gamrot's? School. Okay. The school is, is building that. They've supplied a basically donation form, but it, it's uh, working through processing right now. It's almost finished. Almost there, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We got anything else? No, you're in the meeting.